Now, the Bad Crime Writers Festival is back in action, kicking off, with next, kicking off next week with a blend of crime fiction, true crime, social justice panels and interviews. The festival explores what crime can tell us about human beings today and also in the past. Larissa Berendt is one of the authors taking part in the festival with her book, After Story, and Larissa joins us now. Good morning to you, Larissa. Thanks for your time this morning. What was the inspiration behind After Story? It looks at the impact on a family, on a mother-daughter relationship of a crime in the family, a murder that was committed in the family decades before. So I guess one of the things that it looks at is the longer impact of a crime on its victims. Uh, it was obviously inspired by my work as a lawyer with both victims of crime and families who were seeking justice for a death in custody. Mm, so how close to home was this story for you in writing it? Uh, well, fiction can be fairly layered. It was inspired by, um, I guess, uh, my interactions with the criminal justice and the people I've worked with in that system uh, to, to get some sense of closure for uh, events that have happened that have been really unjust to them. But it also has as its heart a mother-daughter relationship, which uh, I guess is a, a, a strand of it that's much more personal and the characters in there were really inspired by very strong women that I've had the privilege of working with in the Aboriginal community. So this mother and daughter, they were trying to reconcile the past. What is it that they were trying to reconcile? I think the grief that's caused by the loss of the child is so unfathomable and we're so unable to support that trauma that what you do see is a kind of intergenerational trauma where the grief spills over from one generation to the next. And intergenerational trauma is something that I think we've been really sensitive to in the Aboriginal community, uh, particularly with the impact of the removal policy, which does have impacts going through several generations. So I guess for me, what I really struggle with as somebody who works in the legal system is using it as a way to try and get some sense of justice or closure to people who've suffered ho horrendous things as victims of crime or have had something really unjust happen in their family um, it does challenge you about what sorts of things the legal system actually can deliver. Sometimes it can't even deliver what could be perceived as a sense of justice. And even when it works, can it really cause closure or give some sense of recompense for such a horrendous loss? You, you also explore the literary world in, in this book and, and great writers of the past. How do you explore that in this book? And, and also, what role did those books play in your life growing up? Well, um, I guess what I wanted to do was put my characters somewhere where, as a mother-daughter, they were really unable to escape each other. And I remembered when I was uh, younger that I would travel with my own mother in, on those tours where you have, you know, 15 stops in 15 days and sort of on the bus, off the bus. And it is in terms of a story and a narrative um, device a, a really um, good place to put your characters. I've lived overseas and I love travelling overseas and I think all of us who can remember that experience know that we learn a lot about the place we're at but we also learn a lot about ourselves. I know that's true for me. So I was really interested in putting my characters in a place where they would find out things about themselves that they hadn't realised before while they were finding out about each other. And as for the literary um, tradition, I, I did grow up with that. As a First Nations woman, when I was growing up, we didn't have the, the wonderful range of literature that's now available. I think we've got a real renaissance of First Nations writing. Mm. Um, and I, I was really influenced by those classics. I love Jane Austen. I, I love Thomas Hardy. I love Charles Dickens. Um, and, and I felt like I really wanted to explore the similarities and the differences between that body of literature that I grew up with and, and I love, but the storytelling tradition in my own First Nations community, which has really shaped me and continues to define who I am. Do you, I'm curious to know whether you read those books differently now as an adult and now in this time where, as you say, there is this renaissance of First Nations authors. 
Oh, what a great, what a great question. I have to say, when I was doing the research for the book, I went back and I reread all of those books. Some of them I'd forgotten how good they were. Mm. The Virginia, Virginia Woolf's novels are extraordinary, particularly if you think of the time and what she was trying to achieve. Jane Austen's as well, I really found, I'd, I'd underestimated just how skilled she was as a writer. And then there were others, I think perhaps Wuthering Heights, that I, I read very differently. We would think very differently about the relationship dynamics in that now. Um, so for the most part, I was... Um, surprised at how well those classics had stood up. There were a few where I thought, oh, I think <laughs> I think maybe I had a more romantic view of this than I, I, I should have. I, I did learn, as a First Nations person, I, I did learn about sexism and class structures through these books. Dickens is wonderful at talking about the cyclical, cyclical nature of poverty mm -hmm. and of structural inequality. And, you know, the, it, that still felt like it was incredibly relevant today to me. Just finally, Larissa, when you're writing your books, I wonder who you have in mind. Who, who are you writing these books for? Oh, that's also a great question. I, I think for me, primarily, I, I, I think I, I write for two audiences. I want to write stories that resonate with First Nations people. It's what I know and, and I know from myself growing up that um, we didn't have those stories. So I guess there's a, a real need to feel like I'm writing stories where the people I know see themselves in those stories. Um, and then I do really have a passion for telling stories that I think will bring broader, a broader slice of the community into what I see are the, 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 the wonders and the strengths of my own community. People have a lot of views about Aboriginal people without really understanding how our communities work or how rich our culture is and how connected to it we still are. So if I can, through my fiction writing, give people a bit of a glimpse at that, um, that is something I really do try and achieve. Well, Larissa Berendt, we really wish you all the best with the Bad Crime Writers Festival. Thank you so much for coming on this morning. Thanks so much.